Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our final Spotlight Lesson live stream of the year. It's going to be a big party here today. So we welcome everyone. I see that we've got uh, a lot of people logging in. And this is good news for us here today. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed all the things that we did uh, for Holy Week and Easter because we really had a good time putting the Stations of the Cross together. I want to shout out to all the kids that made that possible. And this is, unfortunately, I know you're going to be sad about it, the last live stream of the year. But don't worry, I've been working on what our topics are going to be for next year. It's going to be killer. Uh, we're going to be breaking down the creed and going through all the aspects of what the creed is and bit by bit how that's going to play out. So let us start for uh, today's lesson and let me trigger this over here. All right. And here we go. So once again, my name is Michael Fusco, Director of Religious Ed. You guys know who I am, but anyone that's tuning in that is not part of St. Helens, I am the Director of Religious Ed, and we've been running these spotlights all year long. We plan to continue them next year as well. Just a couple of uh, rules for the live stream. We want you guys to have fun. We want you to learn something, obviously, from these things, and we want you to experience this and have a good time. You know, we are going to be using the chat a lot today, and I see that we have Patty online, and Patty is our uh, youth minister here, and we have Angela as well. They're both going to be monitoring the chat. Just be smart about using the chat, that there's going to be times where we're going to be asking questions, and we want you to fully participate and use those things. And there's going to be a video that we're going to play here today, courtesy of Catholic Online. And during that, we're going to ask that you refrain from using the chat and focus in and watch that video. And, you know, please like and subscribe our page. The more people that we have uh, like and subscribe, the better it is for us. And we can do a lot more when we have people uh, like and subscribe. All right, so here is our opening prayer, and let us start. Name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit, we may truly be wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, the goal of today's lesson is to understand what Pentecost is and to look at uh, seven great lessons of Pentecost. So, you know, we're going to take a look at seven reasons or seven lessons that we can learn from Pentecost. Pentecost, and to reflect on the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We're going to be opening up the chat for a lot of these things. All right, so what is Pentecost? This comes from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and the, the next couple of things I'm going to read may sound kind of heady, but this is, you know, we're going to go always to reference what the Catechism says. So what is Pentecost? On the day of Pentecost, when the seven weeks of Easter had come to an end, Christ's Passover is fulfilled in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, manifested, given, and communicated as a divine person of his fullness. Christ the Lord pours out his Spirit in abundance. And on that day, the Holy Trinity is fully revealed. Since that day, the kingdom announced by Christ has been open to those who believe in him. In the humility of the flesh and in the faith, they already share in the communion of the Holy Trinity. By his coming, which never ceases, the Holy Spirit causes the world to enter into the last days, the time of the church, the kingdom already inherited, though not yet consummated. 
These are big definitions coming straight from the catechism, and we're going to um, kind of break this down on the next slide. Again, we've seen the true light. We receive the heavenly spirit. Let me just adjust this. We have found the true faith. We adore the invisible Trinity who has saved us. The Holy Spirit is God's gift. God is love, and love is his first gift containing all others. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. Because we are dead or at least wounded through sin, the first effect of the gift of love is forgiveness of our sins. The communion of the Holy Spirit in the church restores to the baptized the divine likeness lost through sin. He then gives us the pledge or the first fruits of our inheritance, the very life of the Holy Trinity, which is to love as God has loved us. This love or charity is a source of new life in Christ and made possible when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to be getting our video kind of set up. All right, so here is the translation to all of this. The word Pentecost is Greek, and it means the 50th day. So 50 days after Easter Sunday, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and their followers and the beginnings of their earthly ministry to make disciples of all nations. Pentecost is also a Jewish holiday, which the Jews used to celebrate at the end of Passover. Jews celebrate the gift of the Law of Moses at Mount Sinai on this day, but we as Catholics celebrate the birth of our church. So this is like a birthday. And we want to have a kind of a birthday celebration for um, the church. So really, this celebration of Pentecost is an amazing day. It is something that was um, unusual that took place, and it took place 50 days, you know, after Jesus was was crucified. So it's, it's really a very important um, event in the life of the church. Really, it's the birthday. So the readings for Pentecost can be found in the Acts of the Apostles in Acts 2. So if you want to go and reference scripture, you want to be able to go to Acts of the Apostles and everything about what we're talking about is going to be right in there. So how did the Holy Spirit come to us? At Pentecost, the apostles and their followers were gathered. Well, don't want to do that. There we go. Uh, at Pentecost, the apostles and their followers were gathered in a room. Jews from all over the world were gathered with Peter, the leader of the apostles, and the eleven. At this time, a great wind blew, and a flame appeared as a tongue of fire, which split itself into many individual flames above the heads of all those present. The Holy Spirit came upon the people, and each began to speak in tongues. Despite the fact that many had no common language, they were perfectly able to understand one another. Others who were not so blessed accused those speaking in tongues of being drunk. It's kind of crazy. But Peter arose and addressed the crowd, explaining that it was only nine o'clock in the morning and that this phenomenon was not intoxication, but rather this was the work of the Holy Spirit, prophesied by the scriptures. Peter then called all those present to be baptized, and on that day about 3,000 people were baptized that day. I really wish that uh, I could have an interview with an eyewitness to Pentecost. I, I think that would be really pretty amazing to have someone say, wow, I was there. Just think about like if you were at like a major event— you know, in your life, let's say that um, you were you had good fortune to have tickets to like the Super Bowl and you saw, you know, Tom Brady win it with with Tampa Bay. and You were actually there to witness history. Uh, that's what this was kind of like that, you know, the eyewitnesses 
witnessed history. They had tongues of fire and it came down and it split and it went over to all the disciples. And all of a sudden they started speaking in different languages. And at that moment, they had the tools to go out and to communicate with anybody about the life, mission, and work of their good friend, Jesus. And Jesus told them that they were going to do this. And sometimes for the apostles, they kind of had to experience that. And that's what Pentecost was, was that there was, this was a historic moment. We might not be sitting here. I may not be in my basement talking to you about Pentecost, about Jesus, if it wasn't for this day. If it wasn't for this one moment where, you know, the Holy Spirit descends upon the apostles and touches their lives and makes their lives so incredibly different that now they have the tools, the language, the skills, the charisms to go out and tell the world all about their friend Jesus. And really, it started the church as we know it today, is that there was structure and it really kind of set the tone for how we have church today. So today is the birthday of the church. And right now I'm going to switch on over and we're going to play a video. So if you guys are in the chat, I'm just going to ask that you guys refrain from chatting at this time so that we can watch this short video. This video comes from Catholic Online. So we want to give uh, credit to them for producing this video. We're going to be using it for educational purposes here today. Happy birthday to the Catholic Church. Happy birthday to you, who are the body of the Church. We're all familiar with our own birthdays, and we celebrate them because they mark the day of the year in which we entered into this life. But did you know you have a second birthday? You see, because you are part of the body of the Church, Pentecost is the Church's birthday, and therefore yours as well. And like any birthday, it's a cause for celebration. The word Pentecost is Greek, and it means 50th day. 50 days after Easter Sunday, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and their followers, and the beginning of their earthly ministry to make disciples of all nations. Pentecost is also a Jewish holiday, which the Jews use to celebrate the end of Passover. Jews celebrate the gift of the law to Moses at Mount Sinai on this day. But we as Catholics celebrate the birth of our church. At Pentecost, the apostles and their followers were gathered in a room. Jews from all over the world were gathered with Peter, the leader of the apostles, and the eleven. At this time, a great wind from heaven blew, and a flame appeared as a tongue of fire which split itself into many individual flames above the heads of all those present. The Holy Spirit came upon these people, and each began to speak in tongues. Despite the fact many had no common language, they were perfectly able to understand one another. Others were not so blessed, and accused those of speaking in tongues of being drunk. But Peter arose and addressed the crowd, explaining that it was only nine o'clock, and that this phenomenon was not intoxication, but rather this was the work of the Holy Spirit prophesied in Scripture. Peter then called all those present to be baptized, and about 3,000 people were baptized on that day. These people were among the first Catholics, and Peter is the first Pope of the Catholic Church. The symbols of Pentecost are the flame, wind, and the dove which represents the Holy Spirit. The color of Pentecost is red, and the priest wears red vestments on this day. Parishioners are also invited to wear red on this day. Red decorations, 
as well as celebrations are perfectly appropriate, similar to any other birthday. Special prayers are often said just for Pentecost. All right, so we are back from that. And that short video from Catholic Online really gives us a good understanding of what Pentecost was. I really like that short video, and hopefully that you learn something from that. All right, I had to get my screen back. Sorry for that short delay right there. But let's talk about seven lessons of Pentecost, seven things that we can learn from Pentecost. First, we can never have enough of God, period. That's the first lesson, is that we can never get enough of God. The disciples, when they were out, you know, they, they doubted, they they didn't always know what to do, and they looked to Jesus for help. This is a really important lesson to take away from Pentecost, is that we can never have enough of God. We can never have enough of God in ourselves. We can never have enough of the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit so that we can be better. Second lesson, each person of the Trinity leads to the other. When we get close to one, it makes us closer to all aspects of God. That is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if you're praying to God, it brings you closer to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. If you pray to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I need these gifts. I need these fruits right now. I'm lacking in this. Help me, you know, for this upcoming event that I'm doing. Please bestow these gifts and fruits upon me. That will lead you closer to Christ and to the Father. I know it's a, it's a mystery, the, the mystery of the Trinity, but when you pray to one and you get close to one, you get closer to all. Lesson number three. God comes to us in many ways. In the flesh, through prayer, everyday experiences, wind, fire, song attending Mass, receiving the sacraments, feeling loved by one another. God comes to us in many ways. So the way God comes to me is very different how he might come to you. When I listen to a certain song, sometimes things speak to me. Sometimes when I'm, I'm at Mass and I'm just there in the quiet or in the beauty of our new church, you know, I see the wonder and awe. When I have breakfast in the morning and I look outside and I've got like a whole bunch of little bird feeders out there, I see that beauty. It reminds me of the Holy Trinity. It reminds me of the beauty that God is. Lesson number four, Pentecost is personal and communal. Each apostle had a different experience, but it all happened together. We all need to work together to spread the good news to others, but do it in our own way. And I think this is really important. When you look at the body of the church, you guys are all here. We got, you know, over 100 people logged in right now. You guys all have different abilities. But you guys are all part of our program. And you're all part of the Catholic faith. So just like the apostles, you know, all these different gifts hit them. Different languages were bestowed upon different people. And, you know, it made everybody have a personal experience of Pentecost, but they happened all at the same time. So this phenomena of Pentecost happened all at the same time, but different things were happening to different people. So just like you and, and me, we have different aspects of our faith that we experience. We just want to make sure that we're really in tune to that, but it is communal. Lesson number five, 
we need to prepare for God and we need to practice what we preach. We need to do it every single day. We need to be able to practice going to Mass, helping other people out, telling other people about God. It is all about practicing our faith. Lesson number six, we need to wait on God. He reveals things to us on his terms. Sometimes we want things to happen right away. Hey, you know, I'm looking for this. You know, I really want this right now. And sometimes God says, not right now. We have to be patient that we have to wait on God. And then the last lesson of Pentecost is that God comes to us through Mary. She was there at all stages of his life and after his resurrection. Go to her and you will meet Jesus. It's really a very important thing. Go to Mary to pray to Mary. If you say the rosary, if you spend time with Mary, you're not worshiping her. In essence, you are getting closer to her son Jesus, and that's what Mary wants. She wants you to know more about Jesus, pray to Mary, experience Mary, and then you will find how much closer you will become to Jesus. It's very, um, that's pretty amazing. All right, now we've got some discussion questions. This is the time where I want you guys to use the chat and we're going to put some of your responses up on the board over here. So take your time. Think about this. What was the most exciting gift you ever received? Maybe this year your parents got you the, the super elite Xbox 10 that nobody could get. Maybe that was the most exciting gift. Maybe you got a, a trip to Europe or to Italy and your whole family went and that was the most exciting thing that happened. Type in the chat right now, what is your most exciting gift you've ever received? Let's see what we've got here. And then while you guys are thinking about that, think about what was the most helpful gift you've ever received and how was it helpful to you? What's your most exciting gift? And what was your most helpful? All right, let's see. We're going to switch on over here. We're going to turn this off. And let's see. Grace says a trampoline. All right, let's see. We've got an Xbox over here. So that was your most exciting gift. All right. Catherine said her surfboard and guitar. Oh, Catherine, I'm totally with you on that. You can see I got my two guitars over here. They're really very special to me, and I love to surf. And if you guys ever been to my office, I have my very first surfboard, like real surfboard. In my office, it was a natural art, uh, quad fin. So, Catherine, I totally get that those would be uh, most exciting gifts. Let's see. Sophie, uh, you got a, got a phone. She got a phone for most exciting gift. And Kimberly says uh, her turtle. So Kimberly, oh, it looks like you're on a paddleboard there. That is pretty good. All right, so Grace said that her computer, because the other one stopped working, let's put this up there. Um, new one helps me do more things for school and my stuff at home. So Grace, totally um, getting a new computer is um, really very awesome. And Samantha, the opportunity to learn and compete a dance solo for the first time. So I'm going to say that, Samantha, this is the answer to the second question, which we want to put out there right now. What was the most helpful gift that you ever received? 
So you guys just talked about what was your most exciting gift. What was your most helpful? Samantha says the opportunity to learn and compete a dance solo for the first time this year. So I can see that that would be, you know, very, very helpful. All right. So uh, Luca says that his drum set was the most helpful. Yeah, because you're going to learn a skill. Playing the drums, any instrument is definitely going to allow you to um, learn music and make music. So that's really very, very helpful. All right, so let's take this. What was the most helpful gift you've ever received and how was it helpful? So start putting that in the chat. All right, let's see. Um, swimming. All right, that's the most helpful. I can learning to swim is an incredible thing. You definitely need to learn how to swim, and that is a wonderful gift to learn how to swim. All right, Christina says uh, her computer for school. All right, good job. You know that is a very helpful thing. And then Catherine says, uh, surf camp to teach me how to learn to surf. And again, surfing is a life sport like tennis or golf. You could do it when you're a kid. You could do it when you're my age. And you could do it a lot. I ho totally hope to be surfing when I'm like 80 years old. I want to be on that longboard that I have. Um, hopefully, it'll still float me when I'm that. <laughs> hopefully, I can still swim and move around when I, I can do that. So, yeah, learning to um, surf is really great. And we've got another one that um, Josephine says, my PC, it's helpful because it helps me do my schoolwork while I'm online and play with my friends in games. And of course, you can watch us right here live on YouTube when you have a really good computer. So Josephine, that is awesome. All right, let's go to some more questions. All right. What are some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you're using right now in your life? Put it in the chat. What are some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you're using right now in your life? Now, here's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, or fear of the Lord, or what I call wonder and awe. What are some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you're using right now? Put that in the chat. All right, we know what your uh, most exciting gifts were. We know what your most helpful gifts are. But what are some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you're using right now in your life? I'm going to leave this slide up just for a minute or two so that you can think about it. And I want you to type in the chat your answers. Now, for me, if I was to answer this question right now, I would have to say um, really the, the gifts of fortitude and fear of the Lord are the two that I'm using right now is that, you know, there's some days I wake up. And I know I got a lot of things to do and I know that I might be tired or, you know, I don't want to be on the computer doing a lot of things. And I need that gift of fortitude to kind of persevere and move on and get me motivation. So that's a that's a gift that's really working for me right now is to have that gift of fortitude to, to move on and, you know, to keep going. And that that gift of you know, wonder and awe or fear of the Lord. It's not like, you know, Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of God. That gift is about understanding the beauty and nature and the vastness of God. And I see that every morning. I have these beautiful birds that come and sit outside my window and it really sets the tone for my day that I can be out there and know everything's going to be okay. And that God is right there with me. He's there in the beauty. And, you know, whether it's raining out or it was snowing, 
or it's a beautiful day. You know, I can sit and I can really see the beauty that God has in his creation and that I'm part of it and that I need to do my job to, to keep that healthy and keep the world clean and really to, to understand that I'm part of his plan. So let's see what you guys got going here. Uh, Daniel says that he is, uh, it's knowledge because knowledge is power. And the more that you know, absolutely, that is something very helpful. Um, Liam says, knowledge and understanding of the world. Gregory says, knowledge and wisdom are really helping him. Uh, let's see who else. Um, Christine says, wisdom. All right. And knowledge. So these are really good things. Knowledge and wisdom. Those are really good gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the next question over here. All right, now let's flip it. What are some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you could use more of? What do you need more of in your life right now? You said knowledge and wisdom are the ones that are working for you. What are some things that you really need more of? So do you need more understanding? Do you need more counsel? Do you need, you know, more of the gift of piety? Do you need more of the gift of fear of the Lord or that or understanding of God's vastness? So what are some of the gifts that you need more of? Please um, put that in the chat right now. All right, let's see here. Christine says, fear of the Lord, that she really needs a little bit more of that. Josephine says, wisdom and fortitude, that you could use that a little bit more. Jean-Paul says, understanding, that that's a gift that he needs more of. Fortitude. Absolutely so. So Samantha says, understanding because I can try to understand more things in the world that are going on right now. And, you know, Samantha, you're very wise in, in thinking about that because the world can really be a confusing and sometimes dark place for us. Understanding so I can see where people are coming from when they say something. And that's a really good gift to be looking forward to so that you can understand, you know, and, and have that empathy from other people. Really good job of these. Macy says, fear of the Lord, that understanding, that wonder and awe peace. And I really encourage you guys to get outside. It's going to be beautiful out. We've we've had the good fortune of some nice weather. I know this week is going to be crummy out, that it's raining today, that it's going to rain like all week. Uh, let's hope it does not rain on Sunday. <laughs> Patty can understand why I'm saying that. So we want to be able to get out, experience nature, understand the vastness that God is. Go outside and look at the stars at night. Even the rain is beautiful because without the rain, you know, we know water is really connected a lot to our faith that water is going to produce a lot of good things. And you're going to see your grass grow, beautiful flowers. Uh, some of your trees and bushes may be blossoming right now. And that's all coming because of the rain and then sun. Let's take a look at some other questions over here. All right, so what are some of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that you're using right now? 
Now, the fruits, just as a reminder, is that these are things that you want to have in your life, you want to have abundantly. Because if you look at the opposite of any of these, they're not what you really want or expect. So what are some of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that you're using right now in your life? Here's the fruits. Modesty, patience, peace, chastity, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, charity, joy, generosity, and kindness. Think about this for a minute or two. So what are some of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that you're using right now in your life? What are some of the things that you really um, feel like you're using and using well? All right, so <clears throat> it is... Um, it looks like we've got a couple of things coming in. I'm just going to say, if I was to answer this here, fruits of the Holy Spirit, you know, I'm going to say that patience, faithfulness, goodness, joy, those are things that I think are, are kind of working for me right now is that I think I've been patient for a lot of things. Goodness. I, I always try hard to be good and good to other people, uh, to be faithful, faithful to my wife and, and to my kids and to my job. And then to experience joy is actually to be happy. And when you're happy, that's really good stuff. Let's see what you guys are using right now and you feel like you've, you've got them going in your life. Let's take a look. So John Paul says peace, that he's experiencing peace. Good job um, with that. It's nice to have that. Aaron says goodness, kindness, self-control, and joy. I like that. So nice job, Aaron, for sharing that. Brody says joy and happiness are two things that he's experiencing right now. So two fruits. Tina says joy, that she's experiencing joy right now. Good job. And patience. Tina says patience as well. Let's see. What else are you guys experiencing? So joy. It is really awesome that you guys are experiencing joy in your life. And then Josephine, patience, goodness, self-control, joy, generosity, kindness, peace. Wow, Josephine, you're killing it with all this stuff. So um, that's really good that you're experiencing all of those things. Now let's take a look at that last question. Now, again, we're going to go in the opposite direction over here. What are some of the fruits of the Holy Spirit you need more of right now? What are some of the things that you feel like maybe you don't do so well? What are some of the things that you might need to work on? Now, I'm going to be totally honest right now. I'm going to say self-control is something that like, I want to work on. And uh, it's not like I'm freaking out or I'm getting mad, but sometimes uh, dinner time comes around and you know what? I'm not shy in saying, well, I'm going to eat. Let me have that other slice of pizza. Uh, you know, the other night we, we got like tacos and burritos and guacamole and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm just putting the hot sauce on there and I'm eating it and I'm dipping. And, you know, after a while, you're just sitting back going, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so I'm going to say that fruit of the Holy Spirit of self-control is something that I need to work on. Um, and it's not easy sometimes is that, you know, when you're hungry, you're out, you're talking and you're just doing that kind of stuff. And, you know, I know that I need to put that last piece of pizza back in the fridge 
and not eat it. Let's see what you guys are thinking about as far as the gift or the fruit of the Holy Spirit that you need more of in your life. Let's see. Daniel says, I need more gentleness and self-control. I don't want to lose control of my emotions. Daniel, thank you so much for sharing that. That's really uh, pretty amazing that you uh, disclosed that and you, you put that out for us to to have other people Um Daniel says, caring about what other people think of me or not worrying. You know, that's definitely a fruit that you want to be able to um, to work on. Samantha says, patience, because I could have more patience when doing schoolwork. Samantha, a really good job. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I know that sometimes you guys are on, on Zoom and then you got other things going on and you, you might lose patience for for doing that. Really good job. Julia says patience and self-control she needs more of in her life. And we're going to be praying for all of you guys and all of the people out there watching that are watching this post, you know, today, that when you guys do this lesson at home, we're just still going to include you in our prayers for that. Pam says, patience and self-control over my actions and emotions. And I, I really think, Pam, that these are good things for you to pray for. Pray for the, that the Holy Spirit will give you patience and self-control in your life. And that's what we really want to do. This whole lesson is about Pentecost and getting the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit to go out and, and give us the tools to go and be the best version of ourselves. We need to pray for the things that we're doing good. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for giving me these good gifts and allowing me to take them to other people. And then to say, I need help. I need more patience, self-control. I need to, to be more modest. I need help with chastity. I need help in all these areas. Let's see. We're going to take one more. And Michelle Cook says, I need more self-control and self-love. Well, Michelle, we're going to pray for you that the Holy Spirit bestows those gifts upon you and that you will have that in your life. All right, let's go back over here to our presentation. And it is time for our last wins and spins of the year. If you're sitting with your parents or people in your group, think about one really good thing that happened to you today, and we're going to call that a win. Type your win for the day in the chat or talk to your parents or whoever you're sitting with, brothers and sisters, about what your win for the day is. And then I want you to think about one thing that did not go your way today or a mistake you made or something that just made you feel sad, anxious, or just not right. And we're going to pray for your wins today and we're going to pray for your spins. Let's think about what they are and then type that in your chat. And then we are going to pray for your wins and your spins. Just take a moment or two, think about one thing that was really good that happened to you today and something that maybe didn't go your way. Type them in the chat and let's feature that on the screen here. All right. So, Luca, won a soccer game. Good job. And we want to say uh, that that is great. That's a total win for today. All right. Marin says that she got to hang out with her friends uh, for a while today. Good job. Hanging out with friends is always an amazing thing. Brody says, I played board games with your dad. Hey, having good quality dad time is really very important. And hey, that's where bonds are made. Rainy days, we used to play a game called Rummy Cube. 
I don't know where my mom found these things, but it was like a little domino game. And that was a really very um, joyful kind of thing. All of us in my family on a rainy day or a snowy day or a blizzard, we would break out the rummy queue and we would play that. So playing board games was really good. Uh, let's see. Um, Daniel, my win is that I was able to spend time with my dogs, Mookie and Coop, on this rainy day. Well, I'm sure Mookie and Coop loved that you hung out, probably gave them some treats, gave them a whole lot of pets today. Anytime that you can spend with your dogs, I have two dogs. I spent a lot of time today with my dog because I did a lot of prep work this morning for today and for our confirmation program. And I got to hang out with my dog, Hazel, too. So, Daniel, awesome. Pam, I won both her soccer games. So, Pam, good job that you won your soccer games. Let's see. Christine's win for today. I scored a goal in my soccer game. Tina got to go to my friend's house. Again, it's a win when you can... Uh, be with your friends. Let's see, Ava, I pitched and hit in batting cages, and that you did very good. Nice job, Ava. And I'm glad that you, that's a win that you you pitched and you, you hit in the batting cages. Let's see, Grace says, I played well in my final volleyball game of the season, and we placed sixth overall. Pretty good. I will definitely call that a win for you, Grace. And let's see, Catherine, I FaceTime my grandma and cousin today. It's really nice that you can connect with your grandparents. Isn't technology awesome that we could be on our computers and we can FaceTime people that maybe are away and or maybe that they're just quarantining in their house and they really can't see us. Let's see, we got a couple more over here. Uh, Julia, I spent time with my grandparents and had dinner with them today. Nice job, Julia. That is a win. All right, we're going to take two more, and then we're going to go to our spins. So right now, you guys are doing all these good things that happened to us. Now let's flip it. What didn't go your way today? What is something that you want us to pray for? Maybe something got you down. Maybe you heard some bad news. Uh, maybe somebody got sick. Maybe somebody even died. We want to be able to pray for your spin, something that you really might be hurting or suffering through. We want to be able to pray for that today. So let's, uh, we'll take one more win. It's Samantha says, I got chosen to do a solo part in her jazz class. So Samantha, that is a good win. Now let's see what are some spins. Daniel says his soccer game was canceled. All right, Aaron says that they got crushed in her lacrosse game. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Aaron, that um, your spin was probably somebody's win today. That uh, So look at that in a positive way that uh, maybe through a bad play, you help someone have a really good day. Let's see a uh, some other spins. Sophie says that her friend's softball game got canceled today, so that's something that didn't go your way. All right, um, you lost the soccer game today, but you played the whole game. It's good that um, you got to play, but definitely, you know, that. You got to play the whole game. All right, some uh, your baseball game got canceled here today. A lot of game cancellations here. 
well, Grace, you have a test on Tuesday. Well, hopefully you will be prepared for that test and that we will pray that you will have good results for that. We'll take two more of these and then we're going to get ready to wrap up our session for, for us today. John Paul says he sprained your finger. You know, that, that could definitely hurt. Like right now, I know that my thumb... For what I think it's like iPhone thumb that when you hold your phone like this, sometimes uh, like I, I feel like my um, that my my hand is like hurting because of that. So uh, Jean Paul, we definitely uh, understand that, that is um, something we want to pray for. All right, so Patty says, uh, prayers for Father A.J. over at St. Agnes, who is being deployed to Iraq in a few weeks. Father A.J. spent a year at St. Helens before he was ordained a priest. Wow, that is like, like, that's a bad spin here, Patty. So uh, thank you so much for sharing that. And we definitely want to be able to uh, pray for Father A.J. so that, first off, that he's safe. But we also want to pray for St. Agnes that we know that that Father AJ is just a dynamic, awesome personality, and we loved him when he, he was here at St. Helens. So we definitely want to pray for uh, Father AJ that he's safe while he's over there and that he can do really good work and minister to people. And maybe, um, you know, people might be hurt or shot or whatever, that he'd be able to minister and he may need to, you know, administer some of the sacraments that we talked about, that he may, you know, administer the sacrament of reconciliation to forgive them of their sins. He may have to anoint somebody, you know, because they're hurt or maybe they're going in for surgery. So we definitely want to pray for Father AJ. We want to thank Patty for, for sharing that. So that is going to bring us pretty much to the final uh, slide over here. And we're just going to end with a short prayer. So let us start in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. God of love and life, let us take time to look deep within ourselves and discover the gifts you've blessed us with. May we take the time to direct our lives in a way that best uses our own unique combination of gifts. May our education help us discover where our strengths and interests lie. May our faith guide us in realizing our gifts. May we always be open to the direction of the Spirit and never forget the love you have for each of us. Give us, O Lord, the perception we need to look within ourselves and discover the beauty and gifts we possess. Give us the courage to show others the talents they have. Help us serve others in the community, and so, in doing so, build up your kingdom. We ask this through Jesus our Lord. Amen. All right, this is going to bring us to the last of our spotlight lessons for this year. We did nine of them. You guys have been incredible on the chat. We want to thank Patty and Angela for monitoring the chat on all these sessions. We look to improve upon the things that we did this year. And we know that doing the lessons this year through COVID, through being quarantined at home, some of you may be sick um, or, or had it, or maybe some of your family members did. So battling all these things was really, was really hard. But we want to say thank you to our parents that help connect you, that provide you with the computers and resources. And we want to thank all of our parents for supporting our program through a very uh, unique and difficult year. It has been our pleasure to provide these live streams. I had a great time doing this this year. Uh, once again, we're going to work hard on creating new content, some new videos, and we're going to be including a lot more videos and stuff in our presentations. I'm going to be working on some really great interviews that will take place for next year. 
So that's it for us here today. We want to say thank you. And you guys were really awesome with the chat here today. That's it for us. We're going to sign off. But don't forget about going to Mass, check out our new church, experience all the things that we have here at St. Helens, and we have lots to experience. Keep us in your thoughts and prayers. Use those gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit and go out and be Christ in the world. Thank you so much, and we will see you guys later on one of our other broadcasts. Thanks and good night.